Alright, so in this video I just want to talk about something that I noticed that a lot of people in my classes didn't really understand very well. And it's called punctuated equilibrium. Um, that's just a really scary word for something that's actually pretty easy. Basically, punctuated equilibrium is actually just a, a an addition to evolutionary theory. It's just a, it's a clarification. In our old understanding of evolutionary theory, Let's say you start out with a little critter that looks like this. You can call him Bob, alright? And you know that somehow, 30 years down the line, 30 million years down the line, you get another species called Bob and he has two heads, alright? So, the traditional way of looking at it is if we knew that he was a descendant, or if he was a descendant of him, we used to think that evolution would only occur in very, very small increments from here to here. But what we, we realize that when we actually look at the fossil record, we never find this kind of thing happening. We never actually have like a gradualism. We never have like a very steady state where something goes. Maybe a giraffe starts out its lineage, you know, like this, a little head down here, and then 20 million years later, you get a giraffe like this, you know, sorry for my art, it's terrible, but I don't have to do, but you never, you never have transitional species in the fossil record that look like this, you know, with like a midpoint, and there's actually a really good explanation for that, and it's because if it takes 20 million years to get from here to here, you're talking about, like, if every generation changed by this tiny little amount, you're talking about, like, the difference like, just this tiny iota, like, if this is his height, this is the height of the other guy, you know, I mean, you can't even tell, so it's like, how, how is a millionth of an inch gonna, gonna affect the survival? And, like I said before, we actually never find gradualism in the fossil record, and a lot of creationists kind of like to use that as an argument for, well, there's obviously no evolution, but we actually have a very good way of explaining this, and this is... Stephen Jay Gould came up with this with a guy named Niles Elridge in 1972. And this is where I got most of my information from. And he proposed that, let's say you have a family tree, like a tree of evolution. Traditionally, we like to draw it all, you know, kind of wavy, like that. And it, everything branches off and everything, it's like a slow transition. There's no, like, jerks, but... Stephen Jay Gould said that the evolutionary tree was more like this. It was like a bunch of field goal posts sticking off of each other. He said that when you look at the fossil record, yes, things actually do change on a, on a practical level. They tend to change very slowly. There, is, there isn't a jump from a short neck giraffe to a long neck giraffe. But what he said is that for most of their time, a species is stagnant, you know, they, they fluctuate from, let's say this has to do with giraffe head size, so as this goes up, sorry, you probably can't see that, but as this goes up, head size goes up, or neck size, I guess, and this is time. Well, he was saying that evolution, in the old way of looking at it, if we were to think of if creatures as evolving constantly, what you should have is, let's say, this is the end point, this is the start point. You should have a steady line all the way up, right? But what he said is that for most of the time, creatures don't actually evolve. Evolution is actually a, a rare thing to occur, in term, like relative to just normal. In most situations, most creatures on the Earth at any one time are not in the process of evolving from one species to another. So he would say, okay, so your giraffes would be like this, and then a sudden environmental, and like a very drastic change in the environment, would cause a very, very, very rapid jump, and then they would stay in a, in a, they would stay in kind of like these little brackets, and he would say that at these points they were in stasis, and then let's say it keeps going, and there's another massive environmental change, so it's finally, there's finally a split between short neck giraffes and long neck giraffes right here. 
but it didn't occur in this very linear way. It occurred in chunks. So the only times you ever have really, so from here to here, maybe only about this much time is spent actually in the process of what we would consider evolution. And what I'll, what other, why this important or this theory is actually important for another reason too. In traditional evolutionary theory, what you have with species is you have a species evolves like it, you know, it changes up the tree and then it evolves into another species. So all ancestors of this species will become the descendants of here. But what Stephen Jay Gould said is that no, in order for the fossil record to really add up, what he thought must happen is that there's something called cladogenesis, where you have a parent species, that'll be the thicker line, and it keeps evolving all the way. Okay, this is now time. And this is just change in morphology. And it just keeps going up over time. But he also said that maybe there is some there is a, a side population that experienced a very dramatic shift and there was just enough of them for them to be able to sustain themselves but there wasn't so many that the the genetic the massive genetic pool wouldn't push down any differences so that you actually had the ability for differences among individuals to actually affect the survival rates so let's say one of the populations at this time he split off and he's the thin line and this population kept going so what he said is that you don't have the entire species evolve from one thing to another. That doesn't make any sense because that would require all species to kind of to be in the same area first off to be part of the same population, and to all have the same environmental impact. And he that would also require little individual differences up to like the maybe the millionth of an inch difference between individuals would affect the entire population, which is just it doesn't really add up, and it doesn't add up in the fossil record either. either. But what he said is that if you have a small enough side population, it could evolve separately, make a separate one, while all the parent species is still alive. I mean, the parent species could have died off, you know. Maybe it, died, maybe it dies off, it goes up to here, and then it, it dies, and this is still successful. So if, or the extinction of one species, or sorry, the evolution of a species, or the creation of a new species doesn't require the, the extinction of the parent species. So, just to recap, punctuated, punctuated equilibrium is just another way of explaining how evolution occurs as a process of over time. The big thing that he put forward, Stephen Jay Gould, was that evolution is a rare event in the timeline of life. So, we look at things now as staying in a state, like a static morphology. So from this period to this period, there isn't any change, it's still the same species. This Someone from this time frame, even if it's a million years in the future, if you brought him back in time, he could mate with another member of the species back then. But then when ca catastrophic environmental changes occur, you have huge differences where something from maybe only 50,000 uh, years ahead of this one couldn't mate with this one because the differences are so vast. But for the vast majority of time, species stay in a relative stasis so that's really all you need to know it shouldn't be as confusing as the name would kind of make it seem like it would be but you know names can be scary so we tend to let that get to us but hopefully you understand it now